that Abraham had with Lazarus did not know how to tap into the God's prosperity while well, he was rich in holiness. Praise the Lord. He was prosperous in holiness, but his prosperity was not all round. And that's why God is bringing us to this year that we will have an all round prosperity in Jesus' name. Amen. Some years ago, uh, our Father in the Lord gave me an assignment to go to, uh, to Minnesota. When I reached to Minnesota to help the brethren, what I saw was that when you preach a long sermon, that's one hour sermon, the church will be empty. When you are about 35 to 45, people will begin to make like this. They begin to make, they are telling you that, Pastor, run up, otherwise the church will be empty. Then, one day I, I called one of the brethren and I said, Brethren, what's going on? Because I see people looking at their watch and I see that if the message is above one hour, the church is empty. What's going on? He said, Brethren, say, Pastor, you don't know. Many of our brethren are in CNA and that's why they are trying to make two ends meet. They are trying to work double, work uh, over time in order to be able to educate the children. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. When I saw that emptiness, I said, hey, brethren, we need to go higher. Amen? Amen? God has prospered us with holiness. God has prospered us with righteousness. But there's something that we need to press forward to get things done. And uh, I started to challenge them. I said, by the grace of God, I'm seeing around you, don't you be don't, don't use, CNA is just a bridge. Don't go and build a house on a bridge. Make sure that you plan. You see, between now and three years, between now and five years, I should be going to uh, 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 the next stage in the nursing profession, and the next stage, and the next stage, the next stage, as you see you, director of nursing, as you see you, Aaron, and so on. We look at Minnesota Church today. The brethren are not on the same spot. Amen? Amen. We have RNs, we have uh, uh, registered, we have uh, pra uh, pra nurse practitioners and so on. We, sell, we have medical doctors today. But that time, the majority of the church was all on one level. Praise the Lord. I know some of us are teachers here. We should look at this January and uh, you should look at it. Look, and I will not continue to be only a teacher. I should also be a principal. A, a holiness principle somewhere in one of the public schools in Jesus' name. And you begin to look around. You begin to look around and say, hey, I'm not only going to be a medical doctor under people, I should have my own clinic. Amen? Amen. In, one of, in fact, one of our regional pastors has his own clinic because he's te te tapping the grace of God on the issue of prosperity. Amen? What should we ask ourselves? You know, Gaius, there, were four, there are four personalities in, the script, in this scripture that our sister read. There are four, the apostle is one. Gaius is another one, brother Gaius. Then the other one is uh, Diotrephes, and the other personality is Demetrius. And when you look at brother Gaius' life, he had everything. And the apostle said, look, <laughs> I'm going to pray for you because I want you to have all round word prosperity. The condition, I'm just summarizing from what our Father and the Lord uh, in another message gave. He gave six, seven items. Number one, there must be a desire. The Bible says, whatsoever ye what? Desire. Number one, for you to have all round prosperity, you must be born again. You must give your life to Christ. That's the foundation of the saints' prosperity. That's the condition for the saints' prosperity. And I want you to know that there is a difference between prosperity of the world and prosperity of the saints. Let me give you an example. There is a French mathematician. If I call the name, you will know that, that, that person who... Uh, discovered the Pythagoras theorem. 
Do you know that that French mathematician was so famous, he was so advanced, quote unquote pros prosperous, but the problem was he had a shattered family. Is that, is that prosperity? Is that prosperity? The wicked has prospered. Many people have houses. Oh, I have one in Man Manhattan. I have another one in New York. I have another one in Washington, D.C. I have another one in California. But yet, they, they have sleepless night. Do we call that prosperity? That is incomplete prosperity. Desire. Number one, desire, whatsoever you desire. Number two, inquire. David, inquire of the Lord. Inquire too, inquire. How can I, why should, between now and four years' time, what should I do to get to another level? Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Inquire. And after that, you do admire. Admire. See yourself already in it. Because when you desire, the Bible says, believe that you have uh, you have gotten whatsoever you have, you have desired, God will give you. You admire yourself, you see yourself, oh, when I get to this prosperity, I will use the money to promote the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. A couple of Sundays ago, we, our regional overseer went to inaugurate a church in Bowie. And when I inquired about our pastor in Bowie, I was told that they, him and the wife, they built a church in their village. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And they did a lot of things. What are we saying? When that prosperity comes, that desire for you, it, you, are not using, you are not going to use that prosperity in a negative way. You are not going to be like Jeshurun. You know Jeshurun in the Old Testament? He became thick. He began saying, that, oh, it's my power. It is by my strength. And he fell away from the grace of God. God will help us that will not fail, fall away from the grace of God in Jesus' name. Apart from that, you require what are the things that I should do in order to get to the next level. You require. That means you require discipline. You have to discipline yourself. And apart from that, you press, you press fire. You take yourself that I am going to put in some good time to do something good. I'm going to divide my hours so that I don't waste my hours. Okay, I'm going to divide this hour, prayer, this hour, evangelism, this hour, I'm going to do this particular thing to move to higher to the next step. Amen? And the last but not the least is inspire. Inspire. Every time you get up, you say yes. I am going to the next level. I am going to the next level. You are inspired because Abraham's blessing are your own. So we have seen the conditions for sense prosperity. Let's quickly go um, to the, uh, this other person. His name is Diotrephus. His name is Diotrephus. We pray that none of us will be like Diotrephus in the church of the living God in Jesus' name. The condemnation of Diotrephus that we read from our text from verse 9 to 11, there are about five things about Diotrephus. Number one, he had a pride of preeminence. That's number one. Number two, he had on welcoming attitude to leadership. It could be a, a location pastor and learning that the regional overseer is coming to visit, he say, ah, why is he coming again? We don't need him here. Let him go and take care of other churches. Our church, we, are, we have enough. That is Diotrephus. Then he had unruly tongue against the leadership. Number four, he blocked others. He said, don't go there. Don't, don't listen to that uh, regional overseer. Don't listen. Don't listen to that pastor. Not only that, he was blocking people, and not only blocking people, he came to a point where he was excommunicating people from the church. He said, eh? I, I learned that the regional overseer was doing something 
We said that our church were not participating, and you went there and he excommunicated them. May God help us in Jesus' name. Because he was degenerate. He has backsliding. We pray that none of our leaders will backslide and do, do and go to that level of diotrephus in Jesus' name. Let's look at, quickly look before we pray, let's look at the commendation of the diligent Demetrius. You know, at the beginning of this session of scripture, was, I said, nobody has given a name Diotrephus. Nobody wants to give a child's name Diotrephus, but I would like a, my children to, one of my children to bear the name Demetrius. Amen? Amen. What, who is this Demetrius from verse, from verse, uh, from 3 John, we see that Demetrius is uh, a diligent brother. Demetrius has done something that is very, very commendable. Demetrius, how is Demetrius diligent? He was, he had a good report of all men. Everybody wanted to talk about, everybody, if Demetrius was not in the fellowship, everybody said, ah, that, that brother Demetrius is not here today. Oh. We thank God for his life. Oh. And not only that, he had a good report of, uh, 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 of the truth. He was standing in the truth. No good report is not just about uh, love, but it's only also about standing on the truth, walking in the truth, and living the truth. Amen? Above all, Demetrius had a good report from the leadership. Even Apostle John said that, look, we have record about you. We have good report. It's in our record, in our, in our record from, the, from the pastor where you are, Dim, Demetrius. We have, it's not just that we are hearing about you, but even in the record, in the church record, we have good report concerning you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The question is, why should we desire good reports? What should, why should we desire to live uh, and receive divine commendation? Who can answer that? Why should we desire to live and receive divine commendation? Why? Why? Anybody? Yes? You can go to the mic. It will bring glory to God and also defend the truth that we are preaching, that we are living it out. Praise the Lord. Before we pray, another question is, how can a believer escape negative influence in the church? How can a believer escape negative influence in the church? What should we do to escape negative influence in the church as believers? Sisters, isn't okay, brother, you can go. We can escape a negative influence by maintaining our stand, by being fully established, and not follow man, but follow God. Praise the Lord. The scripture says in book of in, in the book of Romans it says we should mark them that do what? Cause division and do what? And love them and embrace them and avoid them. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord, that the Lord will grant us the grace that we are not going to be like Lazarus, we are going to be like Abraham, we are going to sit down and plan. If you don't plan something, you cannot have something. You are doing the same thing. I told you about the brethren that I went and saw up there. I challenged them, I said, no, you cannot go and build your house on the bridge. What is CNA? CNA is just a bridge to somewhere. But don't, don't settle for CNA. Settle for LNA. All right? Settle for RN. Are you a teacher there? 
do something that plan something that you will you will have to the glory of God. Plan for their children. Encourage them. Don't be just on one spot. God has given us those, those potentials are there. Let us not end like Lazarus. There are a lot of things. They, you see the GCK need money. When we plan ahead, we will have money for our family. We will have money to support the work of God. Look at Gaius. Gaius was very hospitable. He took care of the brethren that went to do the, do the gospel. And he was called a fellow helper. Yes, we need to, like what the, 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 the brother was praying this morning, he said that they, they, they would thank God for the GCK successful because there are a lot of support ministers. It could not just be done by one person, by our father in law. There are a lot of people that are supporting. We are supporting, everybody is supporting, and that's why the program is successful. We are going to pray that we will not, we will tap the potential. That will not just sing Abraham's blessing, am, am I, but we will go ahead and plan, desire, and do something. Inquire of the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prosperity of the saints. Father, we pray that as we receive this challenge and we say, if Jesus tarries in five years' time, I should be a principal in one of the public schools. If Jesus tarries, I should be not just a doctor working under an organization, having my own clinic so that I can have more time for evangelism, so that I can have more time to do exploit for you. Lord, I pray that as many of the young adults are in school, that they will plan, that they will, be, they will not be the tail, but they, they will be the head. Thank you, Father, for everything. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. A doctor. Lift up your voices. I don't see us worshiping God. He's an amazing God. If it's not for God, we wouldn't see this day. We wouldn't be alive.
happy to be in the house of the Lord. If we know we are happy to be on this glorious day, it is the 1st of January, 2023. Just give the Lord a big shout of hallelujah. Praise all. 
After the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples, and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts, and had given them much exhortation, he came into Greece, and there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him, as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derbe and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tychicus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow, and continued his speech until midnight. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again, and had broken bread, and eaten, and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive, and were not a little comforted. And we went before to ship, and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, 
for so had he appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. And the next day we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trogilium. And the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia. For he hasted, if it were possible for him, to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all seasons, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the lying in wait of the Jews, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. And now, behold, I go bound in the Spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. And now, behold, I know that ye all, among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God, shall see my face no more. Wherefore I take you to record this day that I am pure from the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Take heed, therefore, unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn every one night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man silver or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have showed you all things, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had thus spoken, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. And they all wept sore and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spake, that they should see his face no more. And they accompanied him unto the ship. Chapter 20. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced. Chapter 20. Amen. We ask for more.
they are still there today you're going to sing with them and you're going to tell someone you're going to tell them to sing to your neighbors god said you are going to make it Amen. are you all ready for that yes. then why are you still sitting I'm not going to be scared of the thunder. This year, thunders will not scare me because the God who created the thunder is on my side. Tell them this year, I am not going under. I am moving higher. Tell them this year, I am stepping up to the mountain top. Tell them I will meet you up there. 
I won't meet you crawling. You'll be soaring like eagle. You will mount up with wings as eagle in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Can somebody shout hallelujah? This year, I want to say this to you. To dig up from scriptures what has been written concerning you. A lot has been given. A lot has been written concerning you. And they just told us, God said you're going to make it. And so don't be moved by the wind, by the storms. Please sit down in his presence for a moment. Covenant. Pray and pray true. Ask the Lord, Father, give me that new heart. The new heart that will walk in the only one way, the way of holiness. God will help you that your heart being purged from the old things, you will live in newness of life. That every form of hardened, stony heart will be melted and the Lord will sanctify our hearts and give us a heart of flesh that will love the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul. And this year will be a year of divine increase in the things of God. Seeking the Lord with all our heart, that you serve the Lord without fear. All the days of your life, that the whole of this year, each day, holiness unto the Lord. That God will strengthen us in the inner man, that we've been filled with the fullness of Christ. We will serve the Lord without fear in holiness and righteousness all the days of this year and the rest of our lives till we see Christ face to face. Pray that this basic privilege in the new covenant, you will not miss it. This year, we will walk with the Lord in holiness and righteousness. And we will ask the Lord to help us that the better promises will be our portion. This year, you will possess your possession. This year, you have the better promises fulfilled in your life. That we will be perfected in holiness and will perfect holiness in the fear of God. And we, by the grace of God, will enjoy the better promises. Better promises of accomplishing great things this year. Better promises of being blessed all around. There are promises of conquering and being more than conquerors. There are promises of doing exploits in the name of Jesus. There are promises of enjoying everlasting covenant of God being fulfilled in our lives. That wherever you go, people will see as a covenant child. No evil will come near you because the Lord in the midst of us is mighty. Our eyes shall see no evil. Bear a covenant of God's faithfulness. Every area of our lives in our families, in our job, in our schools, in the church, everywhere, that will be filled with the fullness of Christ. Bear a covenant of having the great physician, granting us good health and strengthening us. You will not forsake. Because the Bible says the inhabitant of the land shall not say I am sick. Bear a covenant that you will live a life that is wholly free from fear. You will not fear because God is our strength. He says, be thou, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed for I am your God. He said he will hold our hands, he will be with us. And if God be for us, nobody can be against us. And this year, whatsoever place, the soul of a fish shall trade. There the Lord has given to you as your possession. Fear thou not, God is with you. We will pray better promises of God will be fulfilled in our lives. That Emmanuel, God with us, will go before us. He says, my presence will go with you. And I will give you rest. This year, no man will trouble you. This year, you will not be tossed to and fro. And the grace of God will multiply in our lives. We want to pray the name of Jesus will fight for us. For the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And every tongue must confess in your life, in your family, that Jesus is Lord. He will be the King of kings ruling our lives. 
Jesus shall reign in our land, in this America, wherever we go in our community, the Lord will reign. Better covenant of having the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings be with us, and if God be for us, nobody can be against us. Better covenant of having the manner of life, the bread of life, Christ breaking bread to us as we come to all our weekly meetings and connect with the Lord and tarry, wait upon the Lord and be nurtured and let the omnipotent God, omnipresent God be with us and empower us by the Holy Ghost. Tarry unto ye be endured with power from on high. Wait upon the Lord as we pray that God will empower us, that by the power of the Holy Ghost will cause revival in our land. Everywhere we go will be on fire. And the fire of the Lord will consume all his adversaries from intimidating us because we are untouchable. We are the apple of God's eye. And whosoever dare come near you is touching the apple of God. And who can touch the apple of God? Who can touch the eye of God? God is a consuming fire. You have a better promise this year. Fear thou not. Go in this thy mind. The Lord is with us. And we want to pray that no matter the problems, that around us, the power of the Lord will prevail ahead of us. We are advancing through every adversary because God on our side, we are more than conquerors. Everything that is not of God, they are falling for our sake. They are under our feet because the Bible says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. We have the better promises of God. We have the power of God, the greater I see that is in us, that he that is in the world. Brethren, we are more than conquerors. This year, go in this mind. Greater I see that is in us, Jesus Christ, that he that is in the world. And in the strength of the Lord, we are more than conquerors. Bless the Lord, because as we go forth, this first year, this first day of this year, the Bible has started a better covenant with better promises. And with these promises, we are prevailing. In these promises, we are pressing forward. In these promises, we are possessing our possession. In these promises, we have all the provision we need. You will not lack. You will not borrow. And you will not suffer. And the Lord will protect us. In these precious promises, better covenant, we are protected. We are preserved. And no evil will come near our dwelling. And we are promoted. And God is perfecting all that pertains to us. In Jesus. Jesus' name we pray. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. I am blessed in the morning. I am blessed in the evening. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine. Blessings are mine. Hallelujah, Abraham's blessings are mine, oh yes, I am blessed in the morning, I am blessed in the evening, because Abraham's blessings are mine, for the last time, Abraham's blessings are mine, hallelujah. Father, we thank you for the privilege to see this new year and for the better promises with better privileges of having a call.